Welcome back to the Navy Sports Magazine. Time now to talk a little uh, track and field. Josh Hanna joins us uh, from the men's track and field team. Six consecutive Patriot League championships mm -hmm. as a team group in a sport which certainly has a lot of individual work that everybody has to do in it. To see you and your teammates be able to carry on this legacy that uh, has been started here, what is that like uh, to continue that string? And do you all feel a sense of pride to continue to do that? Right, yeah, I, I think everyone on the team definitely does feel that pride, and it is a, it is something that we set as a goal every year for the team, and looking um, from last year, we lost a lot of great guys from last season, and you're always looking, um, the younger guys are always looking to fill up the spots that are lost from the guys from the years before, so it is a, it is a whole team effort, and we definitely feel that as a team. You guys have had some great distance runners here. There's no question about it. Any of those guys uh, an influence on you as you've developed uh, here in your career? Yeah, our um, team captain from last year, Ryan McCoy, yeah. he was a huge influence on us. Um, Steve Schrader was a yeah. was an amazing runner and definitely inspired me as a as a plebe and a youngster to to really step into his role because I knew he wasn't going to stay around forever. When you saw him perform, because there have been very few that have done it as well as he has here, mm -hmm. did you say to yourself, "Man, I've got to get." to that level to compete here? Or was that a case of, okay, that's what I need to shoot for. Let's go out and do it. Right, yeah. He really he really set a huge bar for us to, like, follow. And, and um, that was definitely inspiring to see that, like, yeah, that can be done. Like, you can, like, balance all of your midshipman activities and, like, get to that level. So that was really inspiring to see him um, achieve at that level. Was that, when you came in here, was that a tough thing to do? Try to balance everything and, and make sure that, you know, because look, a lot is expected of you in the hall, but mm -hmm. when you come over to either the indoor or the outdoor track facility, a lot of you is expected there as a Division One athlete. Right, yeah, that's been a lot to, um, to figure out, and plebe year especially was difficult with that. Um, coming out of high school, we were all, it took, it takes probably about like a year just for us to get back into kind of the workout schedule that we were used to in high school, mm -hmm. where you can balance um, all the activities that you're forced to do with um, running and um, being an upper class, you definitely try and help the plebes as much as you can, um, educate them on all the stuff you've learned and how to how to make that work. But it, it definitely is possible, and yeah, seeing people that um, can achieve at that level definitely helps. I had a guy here in Steve Cooks. He was here for a long time, and you know when you get uh, a coach that has certainly the resume that that Coach Cook has had. What has been, and and obviously you older guys are important in this transition because you guys are kind of set in your ways longer in your right. career but but how how was that relationship and building that with him and maybe being open to some advice that he may have that could obviously improve your performance right yeah I've definitely um enjoyed the transition we've had especially with integrating the men's and the women's programs sure. together that's gone um, seamlessly this whole time and I think it really does build up both of the teams the distance teams are still not quite as integrated yet because we still have coach Cantello that really mm -hmm. runs us so for us the transition really hasn't been too dramatic because we still got um coach Cantello really in charge of us that's a guy that guy's been here a long time Very 50 long plus time. years in one job and mm -hmm. you know when you when you sit down and have a conversation with him I'm sure it's never always about running but what is it about him that Obviously, you all are able to to draw from, and, and I mean, look, his resume speaks for itself. I mean, you right. look at the list of runners <laughs> who have enjoyed success here, but what is it about that relationship that, that seemingly every guy that, that comes to perform for him that wants to and wants to put in the work seems to get the results? Right. I mean, he's definitely very hard on us. Like, he knows um, what's expected of us and what we can achieve if we put in the work. So he's, he's unrelenting on... Um, the workouts and his expectations for us as an athlete and if you can't live up to that expectations he has no worries about telling you that hey you need to <laughs> eat some more salads you're getting fat like he'll he'll tell you that bluntly and um that's really been appreciated by the team um and just yeah his experience all the stories he can tell and all the i mean he's seen every race sure every situation so he can really that perspective is valuable take us inside of of being a performer I mean you know when you're in the 1000 it's you out there by yourself mm -hmm. uh, but then when you get to be part of a, a 4x800 team you know you're one of four guys within that element uh, what what are the things that you have to plan for 
in each event because, you know, obviously people go, well, they're just running, but each event is completely different. Right, yeah. So for, for like the 1,000, um, for example, where you're running, like, you're running on your own, but you're also, like, against Army, you've got, like, your two other teammates in that. Mm -hmm. So it was me and Jake Schubert this year, and we planned it out beforehand what we wanted to do, and we went out there and we did it. And um, just having that bond with the other runners in the race is super helpful. And doing the relays, it's even more so. You really, um, It really pushes you in practice and in your training, knowing that those three other guys are going to be relying on you in that relay and if you don't perform then they're all going to have to perform even harder to make up for for you not performing so yeah i really like the relays i was going to say in terms of the thousand you like you said you and jake had a strategy of what you were hoping to have happen but i'm sure during the course of some events things don't necessarily maybe go the way you thought they might but is in the 1000 is that enough time where you can figure out okay this isn't quite going the way we thought, I've got to do something different. Does it give you enough time to make an adjustment and make an audible as you're going on there? Right, yeah. The 1,000 is, it just barely gives you enough time, really, because you have to, by the time that there's only like 400 meters to go, the race is already pretty, pretty much figured out. So you really only have like 60 seconds in those first two laps to really get yourself into that position. And it really just comes down to like the experience of seeing where you're at in that situation and getting yourself there in time and at the Patriot Leagues, Jake made a move right at the right time, and mm -hmm. it definitely helped both of us. Yeah, no doubt about that. You, um, when you're when you're when you see a guy, maybe a guy, especially a guy that maybe you haven't competed against, and early in an event like that, you see them setting almost an extraordinary pace. Mentally, how disciplined do you have to be to just say, "Hey, I know that guy's." probably coming back mm -hmm. to me and I don't necessarily have to chase him now. Is that a difficult discipline to have there to make sure you want to stay within, you know, reasonable distance, right. but you don't want to overrun yourself early in the race? Right. Yeah, that's definitely a challenge. And that um, comes down to a lot of like doing your homework beforehand and, and really looking at who your big competition is and knowing like their kind of times for the season and knowing kind of how they want the race to go and how you're going to counter that. And again, Coach Cantello does a great job. Um, talking to the other coaches if they're willing to let him oh, know yeah, what sure. their runners are thinking about doing we can all kind of work together with it and um, a little espionage yeah. he knows how to figure out what's going on right on the other he always side. gets the intelligence and we always have a we always have a meeting with him like 15 minutes before the race and he sits us down and kind of goes over the game plan and then tells us good luck so that's yeah. always been helpful how does a guy from winfield kansas end up at the naval academy right so it actually started with um coach cantello sending me letters um, my junior year of high school, and I had known what the service academies were because my uncle went to the um, Air Force Academy, mm -hmm. so I had like a general idea of what they were, but um, his letters, and he would call me and have conversations with me, and that really helped me, and then I got to come here for summer seminar, which was, was a great opportunity to really show me what it's like here. Nuclear engineering. Why? Um, I've always liked engineering, and it seemed like a like a hard one to do yeah. and kind of a new field <laughs> to do. And um, I knew I probably wanted to do submarines when I came sure. here. So that's a big part of that. So I definitely enjoy the major and I've learned a ton while I'm here. That's awesome. All right, 60 seconds or less here. If you could sit down and have one food, what would it be? Outside uh, of training season. We'll give you that. Outside of training season. Right. Um, probably Papa John's Pizza. Excellent. It's always been great here. Excellent choice. One place that you've been that – you really liked and one place that you would like to go if you get the opportunity um took a cruise to alaska that was really amazing and then one place that i still haven't gone to um probably europe i haven't been overseas at all so probably a visit to england would be great I'm sure you could find some great places to run there finally oh, yeah. last 30 seconds person that's influenced you the most um I'd probably have to say Coach Cantello, just learning from his experiences and the way that he's shaped my work ethic and my career here is something I value for my whole life. All right, congratulations on a great career, and good luck with uh, what remains of the outdoor season. All right, thank you, Ryan. All right, Josh Hanna joining us here on the Navy Sports Magazine.